This is my Monstera Indonesian marble and it just reached the top of its moss pulse. So in today's video I want to give you a really quick tutorial on how I extend my moss pulse. Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys know I love growing plants on moss poles. It enables the plant to root into the moss pole and climb up the moss pole like the plant would climb up a tree in nature. But the pole isn't just a support, it's also an extension of the root system. So when a plant reaches the top of the pole, I want to make sure that I extend the pole so that further growth has the potential to root into more of the moss pole and create a larger root system. So that's the reason why I like to extend my moss poles and why I like to extend it pretty timely. I don't want to wait for this plant to grow off the moss pole by two, three, four nodes. When the node is new, that's when the plant sends growth hormones into that node. And that's when most likely you see root growth. Let me show you this for example. This is the newest node over here and you can see that there's roots going from that node into the pole but there is no moss for the root to actually grow into. If there was moss, you can see that the plant is taking the root and then growing it into the moss pole, sometimes even along the surface of the moss pole and eventually hopefully into the pot. So for the pole extension you need a plant that reached the top of its moss pole, a little container to retain the mess, aeroid mix or your preferred substrate. I make my aeroid mix myself and I always have a tutorial on how I make my aeroid mix linked in the description. Now most recently I started adding quite a lot of tree fern. That is uh, actually the newest addition to my aeroid mix but ultimately it's always a little bit different just purely based on what I've got available. You want to create a medium that has a nice balance between being able to retain moisture like the tree fern fiber does for example and aeration and drainage like big pieces of bark, uh, pumice uh, or perlite. A larger pot, a second moss pole. I make these moss poles myself and the tutorial for how I make these moss poles is also linked in the description. A garden stake for stability. These garden stakes are commonly used to like grow beans or tomatoes and so on and just make sure that it is coated so that it can't rust. Some cable ties to connect the poles to each other and to connect them to the garden stake and a little bit of spare moss to fill in the gaps. So this is currently in a 14 centimeter pot which is quite small if you think about the size of that plant but ultimately most of the root system is within the moss pole as I showed you earlier so despite oh, despite this being in quite a small pot it's not actually super root bound. I can bring you a bit closer. You can see you can see some roots but nothing too crazy. Okay I'm making a mess. Ooh. Now this, now this substrate would be just over a year old, uh, nothing terrible, but I'm just shaking it to see what wants to come off. Here we go. So now that I've shaken off most of the substrate, you can really see this is not a ginormous root system within the pot. The root system would be within the pole. Alrighty, easy peasy. Next step is aeroid mix. See how that bottom part of the pole is empty? That's where I put my aeroid mix. So I'm going to fill it with a little bit of fresh aeroid mix. I take my larger pot. This is 20 centimeters and the reason why I'm giving it a larger pot is not because it needs it from a, for the root system. It needs it for stability purposes. So I just flip the pot upside down and then whoop! That way any of the aeroid mix I added earlier isn't falling out. It's really important that you put that pole all the way to the bottom of the pot. As a result of that, you might end up covering one or two petioles with substrate. Not in this instance, I got lucky, um, but that's okay. You know, you win some, you lose some. The reason why I want to put this all the way to the bottom of the pot is because that gives it majority of the stability that we want. And now I just fill in the gaps with more aeroid mix. 
Now I talked about the aeroid mix before, it's not always the exact same but the reason why I'm aiming for something with lots of aeration and drainage is because these aeroid roots really appreciate oxygen and the most common issue is overwatering, especially when we watering the moss pile as well. The moss pile requires quite frequent watering so I want to make sure that the substrate is really aerated and has good drainage uh, so, so that any excess water is freely draining out rather than creating a really soggy mix that can encourage root rot. Now you seen I just potted that up, I didn't do anything with it and I can pick up the pole and the pot just comes along. It is, I don't know what sort of magical physical force is making that happening but I think it is a result of the potting mix being super light and chunky so the friction of the mix is greater than the gravity pulling the pot down or something like that. Anyway, I would not do that after watering <laughs> unless the plant has thoroughly rooted into the pot then eventually the root system is kind of connecting it. Now if you're worried about this you can also just cable tie the pole to the pot or something like that but I personally have never cable tied any uh, poles to my pots and Yes, two or three times I picked it up and it fell out for sure. But that was most of the time also a plant that had root rot. So it didn't have that additional security from the root system. So in that instance, it was actually a good um, reminder for me to maybe look into the pot. <laughs> anyway, all right, so let's take our spare pole that we've got over here. Now I make all of these, I make these poles myself and I'm very consistent in the way that I make these poles. I always make them the same diameter, I always make them the same height, that's mainly due to the kind of mesh that I buy. And uh, again, I have the tutorial linked in the description if you want to uh, learn more on how I make these. Um, moss pots. At the end of the day there's no right or wrong uh, when it comes to moss pots. There's many many ways of constructing a good moss pile. A couple of things you just need to keep in mind is that you don't want to make it too skinny. If it's too skinny it doesn't have much moss in it and moss is what retains the moisture. So you're just going to create a whole lot of work for yourself trying to keep this pile moist. You also don't want to be too thick because then it can get really heavy. I only do that if you know that you're going to have a plant that is very mature or multiple plants and you need to create more volume for the roots. So, and so for example my Adansonia is on a really thick pole but that Adansonia is also four and a half years old. So nothing I really had to face at the very initial beginning. The first three years it was still on one of these poles. Now I filled the bottom part and normally when I make these moss pots I keep the bottom part empty because I'm assuming it might be potted up. But because this one is an extension, I actually fill that part with moss and then the top I'm going to make a little cavity and that's going to help me later on flip a bottle upside down and then let water dripple through the moss pole thanks to yours truly, gravity. And I also have in-depth tutorials on how I water my moss poles uh, linked below and in my moss pole playlist. In general, if you want to learn everything I know about moss poles, head to my moss pole playlist. There's Nothing that I know about moss poles that I haven't addressed in that playlist. Because um, yeah, I think watering is the biggest effort when it comes to these moss poles. Um, but with the right technique, it doesn't actually take long. Yes, it's a continuous effort. You can't just neglect it one day, but it doesn't take much time. Eh? I just flipped that bottle upside down. You saw that this moss pile had a bit of a gap at the top. That gap is actually due to two things. First of all, due to the bottle that I flip upside down on this pile. But secondly, also over time and with continuous watering, the moss will uh, compress and potentially even decompose a little bit. So if your pile is a bit older, this one was one year old, you often see that uh, a little bit of moss from the top is missing, which isn't a big problem. Right? Alrighty, I took the garden stake and I just put it all the way back down to the bottom of the pot over here and then just with a couple of cable ties I connect the bottom pole to the garden stake. Now you'll also notice that this pole is actually located at the back of the pot. That's because I want all leaves to face one way. So I'm not aiming for a plant that is growing 360 degree around the moss pole or have multiple plants on all sides of the pole. If that was the case, I would pot it into the middle. But I like the back because again, it gives me more stability and it also gives me the ability to tilt the plant, uh, tilt the pole slightly backwards, just a little bit. 
because all the leaves face this way with a slight tilt I can kind of counteract that and make sure that the plant is balanced. Then I take the extension and I pop this on here and I just also connect the extension to the garden stake. Actually ideally you do the one at the top first. I don't know if I might be out of frame by now. You might just be able to see me. So just the one at the top. And of course if you can have somebody helping you that's ideal as well but I developed this technique or I mean I didn't develop this technique making moss poles and extending them uh, has been done for many many decades but uh, kind of the procedure let's say the processes the step by steps that I take I have kind of developed to suit me doing this by myself if that makes sense hence I do the garden stake first rather than doing it later if you know what I mean all right now one more step now these gardens they're they're stacked on top of each other right that's all good I can pick this whole thing up now easy but these poles can still wiggle around like that and once the plant has grown on here I don't want this additional stress on the plant and potentially ripping the plant in half so I'm also going to connect these poles together using some cable ties at times this can actually be quite tricky so what I like to do is I like to find the two poles here and here easy I take a cable tie and then I use a chopstick to kind of guide the cable tie out of the grid on the other side here we go Perfect. Now usually just do three of those, one on this side, one on this side and one at the front. So let me quickly do that. I cut off all the excess cable ties and I also want to make sure that I twist the cable tie into the pole so that that sharp edge that I now just cut isn't going to hurt any future leaves. Alrighty, now this moss pole over here, you can probably hear it is super dry. That's because when I make these moss piles I then store them dry to avoid any mold and I dry them by just putting them into the sun and uh, the sun can then also kill any potential mold spores. Now I Right now, I don't need to moisten the top pole yet because there's no root system in the moss pole just yet. So for now, I'm only going to water in the pot because I just potted that up and I don't need to water the pole because the bottom pole, if you can hear that, no crunch, meaning the bottom pole is still sufficiently moist. However, once this now starts drying out, I will start watering the whole pole. Even though the top pole doesn't have any growth on it just yet, First of all, watering with the upside down water bottle technique makes it much easier but also the pole will always dry out from the top first. So if I only water from here down then, for, then this part will dry out first, the part where the plant is just growing, the part where the plant is now growing new roots. That is not the part that I want to dry out. If I water the full moss pole it's going to start drying out from up here so after watering, yes, I'll need twice as much water now right, than I did before. But once I've done the watering, I actually have plenty of time and the moss pole can slowly dry out, dry out, dry out, dry out, dry out. And only once the drying out part has reached the part where the uh, plant is attaching to the pole, only then I need to water again. So it's actually going to enable me to water less frequently, but with every watering I'll just use a little bit more volume. So the extension obviously gives the plant more room to grow, but the extension also makes your watering experience much easier. When these plants are hitting the top of the moss pole, the top is basically constantly about to dry out so they're the most work. The closer the, to the top of the moss pole they get the more work it is in consistently keeping the top moist. In that instance I use a really high frequency but less water right maybe I just need like 200 milliliters of water to just water the top because the bottom hasn't even dried out yet. With this one I can do the opposite more volume so probably a liter a liter and a half maybe but probably only once a week or maybe every 10 days if it's really cold and humid or something like that so extensions aren't just optimizing the root system going forward they're also making your life a little bit easier now this plant in itself isn't all too big yet the leaves aren't huge so it's not really dragging the plant forward however I still always take my pots and put them in heavy decorative planters 
and they make them bottom heavy and kind of give them, give them a little bit more structure. So three tips to give it good structure is plant the pole all the way to the bottom of the pot. What could happen is that the pole and pot, the whole thing tips over. But if you don't put your pole to the bottom of the pot, then you could potentially have your pole fall out of the pot. So you could have the pot in a nice decorative planter and make it bottom heavy, but the pole just falls out of it. So that's the first thing, all the way to the bottom. The second thing is the garden stake. It just keeps it upright. It stops the pole from wanting to bend in itself and become like lump, uh, one-sided or heavy on one side. And then the third thing is the heavy decorative planter. If these three things still don't give you the confidence that this is going to be stable, then sometimes I also do a slight backwards tilt to counteract it. And with that backwards tilt, I can then also kind of just lean it against a wall. However, if I lean a plant against a wall, I usually prefer the pole to be plastic backed to not, you know, mess with uh, the wall. Um, but you could also get creative. You could put a hook in the wall and then kind of hook the pole into the hook, right? Like if something is hooked on there, it can't fall over anymore. Um, Pest Plant Life is hooking her poles into her curtain rail at the top just with a hook again and so on. So you could obviously also hang plants. Uh, something that's hanging can only fall, not tip over. Um, but I suppose that's a little bit harder to manage. Uh, I'm a renter. I can't put anything in the walls. I don't have curtain rails either. So I'm just relying on the heavy decorative planters. But honestly, I have way less casualties than you guys might think. It actually hardly ever happens that a pole uh, falls over. And when a pole falls over, it's never in its spot. It's always when I move it for watering or for content purposes and so on. Or uh, if there's a really, really crazy wind going through the house. Uh, something like that. Anyway, enough talking. I wanted to keep this. Uh, extension tutorial short and sharp but as you can see I'm very passionate about my topic of moss poles and I have a lot of knowledge to share around stability, watering, extending, chop and extending and so on. Um, so please check out my moss pole playlist if you want to learn more about my processes. Oh actually okay one more thing before I fully wrap it up. I just mentioned chop and extend. Chop and extend is the natural progression of this. So right now we only extend it, but eventually the plant will reach the top of this pole as well. And what we then do is we chop the plant and pole. The plant and pole is one unit. We don't differentiate between them anymore once the plant is rooted into the pole. We chop it exactly where we just extended. We take the top pole, we pot it back up and we re-extend it. So this extension process is going to be repeated again and again and again. Just next time around, we first need to do a chop before we can then extend it. Now keep that future chop and extend in mind when you choose your moss pole. Like this one is just the one I make myself and that's easy. There's heaps of ones that you can purchase as well. Just keep in mind how these purchased poles are connected. If these purchased poles are connected, I saw some that connect via a twisting motion for example. It's going to be really hard to separate these two poles eventually if you need to twist them apart because by twisting them apart you're also going to twist all of the roots from each other you know um, so it's not necessarily something that I would ever purchase but you might not realize that it's a weird purchase or that the purchase is going to give you a lot of pain when it comes to chop and extending later because it's really a twist and extend and that twisting motion isn't necessarily uh, going to be uh, really nice for the plant. Um, each their own. Just keep that in mind. Most other supports can be extended in a really similar way I suppose and uh, most supports will also be suitable for chop and extends later on and so on. Uh, but just keep that in mind uh, when you make a decision on what sort of pole you would like to purchase. Um, and then just, just one more thing while I've got you. I have noticed that plastic backed poles are much more popular um, and I do use a lot of plastic backed poles as well. I don't make them myself, I get them from Grow Vertical but ultimately the principle is the exact same, just that one half is covered in plastic to reduce the surface area to increase the water retention. But especially with Monsteras, they really like aeration as well. So I personally prefer the open style moss poles with Monsteras where I can. And uh, at the same time, I also prefer the aesthetic of the open style moss poles. But aesthetics are personal preference. Anyway, 
now I truly said what I wanted to say. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative to you. And again, please refer to the Moss Power playlist if you'd like to have more information. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with anybody who might benefit from this information, leave a nice comment, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye.